middle of October. The weather's moving in. Winter's here. It's like way too early. Way too early. Can't go down south. Can't go anywhere warm. It's going to be a long, hard winter. It's wonderful when you can sit and listen to the snow fall. Out here in the middle of nowhere, so quiet, peaceful. Way too early for snow. So I'm gonna do a little technical video for you guys again. For those of you who've been following this channel know that I've been helping some friends get into large format photography. And one of them emailed me last week and said, you know what would be great is if you actually went through the steps that you do to take a photograph. And I thought, gee, that's a pretty good idea. Because as we all know, large format film is expensive. And these steps, whether you shoot four by five, five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, doesn't matter. You should do these steps all the same. And if you get into a habit of doing the exact same steps all the time, you're going to make less mistakes. And if you make less mistakes, it's not going to cost you money and you're going to get photographs and you're going to be a lot less frustrated with large format photography and be less likely to give it up. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I do to take a photograph each and every time. Each and every time is always the same. It's always repetitive. I have a systematic way of taking photographs right from when I grab my tripod to getting my camera set up on the tripod and taking the photograph. And I'm going to take you through those steps right now. One of the first things that I do when I come to a scene often is I have a Lindhoff viewfinder and I will look through and I can pre-visualize the scene. And I can use it either at a wider focal length or at a longer focal length. And then I can see exactly which lens I'll use to get the photograph that I want. Again, it just kind of saves me a little time, a little effort, and it saves you shooting a sheet of film that you know might work on a different focal length. So I find one of these little viewfinders really valuable. When it comes to setting up a tripod, I do the same thing every single time. I put out the legs full length. I use a Gitzo, it's called the GT2545T travel tripod. And the Gitzos are okay, as you can see from my finger here. Uh, my, it doesn't like fingers very much, so you have to watch that once in a while. But I tend to always set up my tripod exactly the same way each and every time. And one of the ways is having this front leg facing your subject. And when this front leg is facing your subject, you can always work behind here and then you can get closer to the camera and you're less likely to bump the tripod and make it move. Same with the head. Even before I put the camera on the tripod, I get the head in the correct place. I kind of level it off and then I get everything set for the camera. So now I've decided on my composition the photograph I want to take. I've already decided if I'm going to shoot horizontal or vertically. Because once your camera's set up, you don't want to be moving it and taking a photograph. Once you move it, you have to refocus, make sure everything is locked down tight. Because oftentimes, if you move it, you can slightly move the composition. The next thing I'll do is mount the camera to the head. And I always give it a little wiggle and make sure it's tight. I've had a couple of times when I've mounted the camera and it hasn't been super tight and it's kind of come a little loose and uh, I've never had a camera fall, but that's why. I always make sure and make sure it's super tight like that. The next steps I'll do is I will put the cable release into the lens and then just do a quick check, make sure that that's firing 
And then I will open the preview lever and I will open the aperture to f5.6 to make sure the lens is the brightest it is so that you can focus on it. I will just do a very rough composition on the back of the camera, looking at it really quickly. My next step is I also, even though there is a bubble on the camera, I have a little level and I will make sure that the camera sits level because that's part of the joy of using a large format camera. When you level up the backs and level up the camera, then all the lines are correct. And that's one of the reasons I really like using a large format camera is to correct this perspective. We don't see when you shoot with a wide angle lens and you know those converging lines, the lines that look uh, a little wacky, a little curved. We don't see that with our eyes. So I like to take a photograph that has all the lines straight. And when you see those prints, it's just a lot more pleasing to the eye when you do that. So now I have a rough composition. I have my camera's level. My camera is set at the widest aperture. I will now go under the dark cloth and start doing a fine tune focus. At this point, I always have my loop on. I usually have a light meter on as well. So I have both. I don't, so it doesn't hit the mic and cause some noise, but then I'll go underneath and do a fine focus. And after I do the fine focus, then I'll do a, a fine last composition. And I'll give the image any rise or fall that it needs or any kind of movements that it needs. And from here we're set. I'll close the preview lever down and I'll start doing a exposure test. Always double check to make sure your ISO is correct. And then you decide how much depth of field you want. Do you want a lot of depth of field? Do you want a narrow depth of field? That's gonna de determine your exposure. So how I like to meter is I like to look for a piece of gray. See if I could spot something that is gray. And if you can do a spot meter off that, you know your exposure is gonna be very close to that. Now in this instance, there is no gray for me to see here. There's a lot of white and a lot of dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a meter reading off the lightest part of the scene and off the darkest part of the scene, and I'm gonna average the two. So off the white snow, my exposure reading is a 15th of a second at F64 using ISO 320 film. Off the darkest part of the scene, my exposure is a 15th of a second at F16.5. So I'm gonna average the two. So after I've taken my spot meter readings and I've calculated my exposure, first thing I do is always shut the preview lever. I then cock the shutter and even take a test shot just to make sure it's closed. And then if you always get into that habit, you will never put in a film holder, pull the dark slide, and then all of a sudden your shutter will be open. So my exposure I calculated is gonna be a 15th of a second at F32. So I set the shutter speed, I set the aperture, I cock the shutter, I get out a sheet of film, and I gently put in the film holder into the back. You don't wanna be jerking on it or doing it hard because sometimes you can move the camera. I then pull the dark slide out. I always wait a second, make sure there's no vibrations happening. And I take the photograph. And then I always turn around the film holder, the dark slide. There's white on one side, black on the other. And I slide it back in. I take it out and now I know the black side has been exposed, the white side has not. And that's it. I've taken my photographs. 
I take my film holder and I put it away as fast as I can generally when I'm working out here. It's not dusty today, but dust is a huge problem out west here. Today it's rainy, it's snowy, you don't want to get the film holders wet, you don't want to get your film wet. But if you repeat yourself, if you get into a habit of doing exactly the same steps time and time again, you will lose less film. You'll be less frustrated and you'll be more in tune with going out and taking some photographs with a large format camera. I hope you enjoyed this little episode of my process, how I do it, the steps that I take time and time again, and nothing ever really changes whether I'm shooting 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, it's always exactly the same. If you like this content, let me know, leave me a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Uh, I just got back from the coast of Canada, the west coast of Canada, where I shot a bunch of pictures on 5x7, and that episode is gonna come out real soon. See you next time, cheers.